Hey guys, it's Jeff here again. Um, I want we're going back into Lightroom. This is really what I wanted to dive in with. Uh, the other things that I've done so far in these seminars or in these little sessions is kind of preparation for this piece. Um, I do production printing, and by production I mean my leagues and at our studio we do our production printing from Lightroom and I know a lot of people have a lot of questions about it so I wanted to try to kind of shed some light on and go through all of the different settings and whatnot in the print module of Lightroom uh, so if you wanted to do this yourself this will kind of give you the guide or the kind of a step-by-step -step on how to go about setting up templates for printing and uh, all the various settings that go on down the right hand side of the page uh, so let's jump in uh, we got Lightroom uh, familiar photo I did crop it um, instead of this being sorry I'm in the print module instead of this being the image uh, I cropped the same image so we can deal with it here. This would be more of a standard um, quote unquote production type of a of a image for me. Um, you know, for example, this could be uh, we do a military ball where we print on site. Um, I do all my sports league stuff. Uh, depending on the size of the sports league and what uh, group it is. Some of them I print from uh, from Lightroom, so it's very doable. Um, I have been doing it for a long time. I've probably made every possible mistake there is in printing from Lightroom. Uh, so you know the school of hard knocks has taught me quite a lot in this regard. So I want to jump right in. Um, as you can see here on the left hand side, these are um, template. It says template browser. Um, these are all the different templates that I have set up for printing. Um, there's more, you know, user templates. I've got some of them hidden, but what I really wanted to point out to you is I have three printers that I do production to. Um, I have an Epson 960 and I have two Epson 970s. Um, great printer. I really think very highly of the product that, that comes out of them. Um, I get a lot of compliments from them. Uh, from my prints. So um, I used to have two 960s. Um, one of them got taken to my studio in Monterey, which is uh, we were using. There's two 960s there. Um, one of them, because of use, um, some would say overuse, that printer uh, died. So I took one of my 960s from here and put it in down there and subsequently replace it with 970s <coughs> I'll put a I'll put the uh, a link to the Epson 970 printer down below uh, it'll print a maximum size of 11 by 14 uh, it's one of those I guess they call them small in ones uh, you know all that marketing mumbo jumbo they make a great product I know there are other products out there I've had very good luck with Epson's um, the reason that I have these two printers and we're going to discuss that a little bit here in a second which is more specifically why I have these templates set up for the 960 and these set up for the 970 and these set up for the 970 what I call other so I can determine which printer it's going to um, they have the capability of printing two different sizes. Um, they'll actually print a lot of different sizes, but at one time, there are two trays for paper in each printer. So for my league production and for our studio, we have 5x7 and 8x10 paper loaded into the printer. Um, obviously, I can do 4x6s or some other size that's 85 by 11 or smaller. And then each of these printers has a uh, a rear feed that you can put into, you know, a larger piece into the rear of it. That's more of a hassle, but it's definitely doable. But with this, I want to talk about production printing, primarily five by seven and eight by ten, which would be type of a school or a league or 
Um, in the case of my studio, we, we print out five by sevens and eight by tens for customers. So, um, just gonna kind of page through them here for this 960 other. Um, I have wallets. What I want to point out here on the wallets, you see this real thin gray, thin, thin dark line. Um, it actually, because I have this show guides, because I have that clicked, you don't see the white, little, little thin white, and it doesn't even show up here, it's so thin. But over here in cell spacing, I have a 0 0.01 inch white line. I do that so people can cut them. Um, sometimes when you get photos back in their wallets, there's it's really kind of hard to tell where they are. Uh, I put this thin white line so people can make it easy and cut. You know, f photographers have these really expensive photo cutters and mom and dad have scissors. So uh, I think that's a nice touch to be able to easily cut these apart. And, you know, it's 0 0.01 of an inch. It's not making your wallet that much smaller so that's what if you see these this black lines here and here that's where that's coming from and I'll go over that a little bit more in a second um, same thing um, just another template this is actually a four by six um, with a watermark so one of the things on your Epson or sorry not Epson in Lightroom each of these templates has to be named differently. Um, you can't have a 5x7 and a 5x7. They have to be a unique name. Even though you have them in different folders, you can see this is a different folder and I can collapse or expand these. It has to be unique. So I say, you know, in this case, it's the 960 other. So my 5x7 horizontal is a 960 other. I'm just trying to make it simple. Um, because I have what's called zoom to fill up here um, and rotate to fit up here in the upper right corner, that's why that flipped sideways because I have a horizontal image versus this would be a vertical image. Um, I'm just going down the row here again. There's a watermark here. Again, I will explain this because we're going to set up a template uh, on the fly here. And then I have an 8x10. Um, I don't have an 8x10 that's horizontal because predominantly I am shooting, or sorry, printing vertically. Um, my league and team stuff is generally vertical um, for the individual photos that we're taking. Um, at our studio, we have a horizontal and a vertical, so you can see it on the screen and be able to make decisions on it. Um, one thing to note here before we get started into making a template, you can see over here on the cell size that this is an 8x10. Over here I have them labeled such, and I'm just using the same image. Um, and you'll get, you'll get the hang of this when you start printing in this, but 4x6, because I'm shooting on a, this, is, this was shot with a DSLR, um, which would be the same as a mirrorless camera, the aspect ratio is 2 3. This is a 4 by 6, which is 2 3. So, when this is how the image was originally cropped, when you go to a 5 by 7, which is a slightly different aspect ratio, you see I can grab the photo and move it a little bit. Um, I'm just clicking and dragging the photo. And then when I go to an 8 by 10, uh, again, you can click and drag. And sometimes, um, here's the case if you are doing a lot of production shooting and printing you need to be shooting for an 8 by 10 because that aspect ratio is more square than a 5 by 7 and this is the best way I can show you this was not cropped uh, well it was cropped to original which in in Lightroom speak is 4 by 6 or 2 by 3 so here where you saw it and I'm clicking and dragging and nothing is moving it's because I have a full crop 5 by 7 being a different aspect ratio a little bit different crop so um, it's a little shorter 8 by 10 is even more severe so you can see I would need to recrop this in order to print it from here um, so I tend to try to crop everything assuming that I'm printing an 8 by 10 and that's uh, as well as I'm visualizing in the camera that I am printing 8x10 
so I need to be cropping in camera 8x10. So basically visualizing that a little bit off the top and a little bit off the bottom is going to come off of every photo that I have that I take if I want to print it. Um, if you're filling the frame, uh, if you've watched one of the other videos, this gal here, you've seen her before. You know, obviously filling the frame 4x6, I still cut off her fingers. 5x7, I cut off her fingers even more. 8x10, her hands are gone. Um, so, you know, those are things that you need to be aware of when you're shooting. Um, but enough of that. Let's get into the templates. I'm actually going to build a new, um, just to show you how this whole thing works, uh, we'll go back to my original image here. We'll start with this one. Um, if you're starting from scratch, um, the best way to do it is set up what you want on the right hand side over here. Um, and I say on the right hand side, but initially it all begins on the left hand side, down here on the far left under page setup and print settings. Um, page setup is going to say I want a particular printer and I want a particular size. In this case, um, we'll just set this up for this Epson XP960 other. So I'm going to leave that the same. Um, we can set up any of these options. Now when you install the printer, these are what comes from, in this case, Epson, that they are saying that this printer is capable of printing that's not a custom size. So these are off-the-shelf sizes of thing of prints that you can make from this printer. Um, I mentioned that you can print 11 by 14s, 11 by 17s. In the back, there's the the, seven, the 11 inch wide. Um, in this case, I'm just going to set this up as a uh, five by seven, um, and there's two options under five by seven, and we're gonna we want a, a full bleed print, so we're gonna choose this one. Hit OK. Now this didn't change. This stayed the same that it was before because I kind of somewhat cheated. I started on my previous template. Um, so just to show you that um, I'm going to actually make a real new one. Let's start with a 4x6 over here first of all. And then page template, it's changed here. So let's change this to 5x7 and hit OK. That's obviously going to change it. Now, 4x6, 5x7, here's your difference. Over here, the cell size, which is the image area is going to be 4 by 6 still because that's what I started with. So I'm just going to expand these. Just click and drag. Now we've got a full bleed 5 by 7. Again, when I grab it, I can move it up and down. Um, that template that I had before had a watermark. We'll get to that in a second. But I want to go up here to the very, very, very top and the far right. Single image contact sheet. Most everything that I do is a full bleed image. Uh, so it's borderless all the way to the edge, whatever size is standard for frames. Um, you know, I really want to try to make this simple for people to, to frame this if they want to, or it goes in a template or a temp, you know, some kind of a template that they have. That's why predominantly most of my templates in Lightroom are single image. It's not to say that I haven't tried picture packages, um, a picture package allows you to put multiple multiple sizes on one sheet. Now the problem that I have with this is my printers print 8.5 by 11 and smaller so I tend to just kind of ignore this one. Um, custom package is something that I actually have done. Um, there's some products that you can buy from companies such as Neil Enterprises or there's various ones across the country. I purchased a lot of stuff for the sports business from Neil and they have these little bracelets that were sports oriented, you know, baseball, football, basketball, those types of things. And they had these very small cutouts. So I measured what they were. I put this custom template together so where I could get five images. You can see the five right here. I could get five images for the bracelets as well as four wallets on one 4x6 sheet. 
So when we sold the bracelet, you got four wallets and these little cutouts for you. I would cut them out or you could cut them out with scissors and you could put them in your bracelet. So that was a, a place where I used a custom package for. By and large, almost everything that I do is single image. So that's kind of the template I'm going to set up with you. Um, zoom to fill. We talked about this a little bit. If we go, if we don't use zoom to fill, when you use 11 by, sorry, 8 by 10s or 5 by 7s, your 2 by 3 cropped image is not going to fill the frame. So zoom to fill is always fun. Rotate to fit. We saw that before when it was a horizontal pack, a horizontal image or a horizontal print, but you have a vertical picture, it's going to flip it horizontal automatically. And then repeat one photo per page. When you're, when you're using a single image, like we have here, it's not a big deal. But when you're doing wallets, it is a big deal. So I could do four different wallets if I wanted to. Um, I've always told people um, at my studio, if someone tells you they can't give you four different wallets, they don't know how to use their software. Um, and I stand by that rule. Um, it's more difficult, no question, but it's definitely doable. Um, in this situation with this template, I can just choose, and I'm down here at the bottom, holding the shift key, and I'm choosing four different photos. Um, sometimes I, people ask me for that. Um, it's not very often, but sometimes they do. Um, in the case with leagues and that kind of stuff, there's one photo of the kid, and that's the one that they're getting. So it's repeat one photo per page. <coughs> I'm just going to march all the way down the right-hand side here. Um, just to give you an idea of what these types of things do. Um, margins, do you want... I'm going to go... Sorry, we're going to go back to our... Uh, five by seven margins sometimes you want uh, you may want you could do a border with a margin you could do all kinds of different things with a board with a margin um, sometimes um, and I don't know if you're very familiar with inkjet printing but the printer itself actually auto expands the image just a little bit to make sure you have a full bleed maybe you've got something critical right on the edge and I'm just gonna give you an example right here in this image right here this Armstrong tire sign it's really close to the edge so if I go over here and take away that margin that's pretty close to the edge and there's a high likelihood that I'm gonna lose that that gap between whoops I lost it all together there so if I pull that down and do like that and now I've got his foot close and I've got this Armstrong sign if those are really important to get in either crop it differently or if you can't crop it differently, you can bump in your margins just a tiny little bit and that will give you a little bit of extra space that will print still color full bleed, but that margin will be taken up with the auto expand that the printer does. Uh, page grid, uh, this is how you get your, your wallets or multiple images per sheet. You know, how many rows do you want? How many columns do you want? Now we have wallets. Uh, take those away. Now we have a five by seven. Um, cell spacing does not show up here, and we, I showed you that before. The 0 0.01 inch between the wallets it doesn't show up until you actually give the grit, give the page some kind of multiple images because it will put this space between them. That's where I put in this 0 0.01, 0 0.01, just to give it a little bit. And the show guides, rulers, bleed, page margin, image cells. That's why it's black here. If I unclick that, now you can see that really faint white line that I put in there so customers can find it with their scissors and cut those apart easily. Um, one thing to keep in mind, a 5x7 cut in half is a 3.5x5, which is another common size. Um, all of our plaque products that you use for sports use 3.5x5s. So you can see on your screen how I make a 3.5x5. I take a I I actually take a horizontal template, I give it two columns, and I put 0 0.01 between them, and away we go. One five by seven sheet gives me two three and a half by fives. I give them the extra three and a half by five. Of course, that's put into the pack the package price of the product. 
pricing is a whole nother thing we can get into, but that's how simple it is to make a three and a half by five from my five by seven template. So just march it on down. We already saw that it's five by seven. Show guides. That's the edge of you know the rulers here, so I kind of have a quick idea of what I'm dealing with. Page bleed, that's all the way out to the edge. Margins and gutters. We don't have any, but it would show them if I had them. Image cell. Here, because I have a dark black, a dark background, and to get this menu to come up, all I did was right click on the dark section. You can have white. Then you would see this thin black line around here. That's your image cell. I like it on black because predominantly I am doing color images, no black and whites, and most of the time I have color right to the edge. Dimensions is not helpful to me. It puts this little thing in the corner. I know it's a five by seven. There's various ways I can tell. There's five by seven right here. There's five across the top. There's seven down the side. So I leave dimensions off. Page background color. Um, because this is a full bleed image, you don't see anything here. But this would be a good place where you could put a border around the edge, edge of the photo. Maybe a colored border. Um, it has to be solid. So if I went up here and brought in my margins and changed the color of the page to say, um, these are all monotone, but you can turn it into, uh, you can turn it into color. Um, you know, just pick a color. Oh, that's really quite an interesting color, but hey, gives you a good demo. Um, I'm gonna leave it white. I'm gonna go back down here and give us a click there. Um, not something that I use very often, but just in case it, it is there and something that you can do. Identity plate and watermarking. Very interesting things to, to work with in Lightroom. Um, I would say a lot of this stuff, um, when it's made for speed, um, watermarking, for example, uh, you guys saw how I had my Insta image logo in the lower right corner here. That's a watermark. Identity plate puts it right smack in the middle. Um, you can do a couple of different things with identity plate. The one interesting thing that I have found with this, um, what you see on the screen right now is use a, a stylized text. Um, that's simply you type in whatever you want here in the middle. You give it a color, you give it a size, you tell it what font. You hit OK and up it pops. Now you can see it here in the middle. I have the scale down to 25%. You can take the scale up. Um, I watermark photos this way sometimes. When I hit print, that prints on the middle of the image. Not really the best use of what you can do with this. Where you really can do some fun things with identity plate is using this graphical identity plate instead since we're photographers or since we're trying to be photographers we're all familiar with png which allows you the, the png format allows you to use a transparent part of an image well what you can do with this graphical identity plate is overlay a png over the top of your image so if you wanted to put a logo or if you wanted to put um, some kind of a design, say this was a, this is a, I don't know, a barn dance. You could put, you know, a, a, a particular school or organization. You could do an, an identity plate and put it over the top, and that would print on each image. Um, kind of a nice thing. There's a lot of things that you can do with this. So uh, if you guys have any interest, I can show you going a lot deeper into that because I've done a tremendous amount of stuff with identity plates. Um, it's kind of a workaround. It's not really... Um, uh, it definitely does slow down the process when it sends it to print because it's got to render the, render the two together as one and send it to the printer. But faster computers, blah, blah, blah. All of that stuff has sped up the process. So that's identity plate. Watermarking is a little bit different in that it basically wants you putting it in the edges. Um, you can, uh, again, you can do something graphic here. Um, here. Here they're showing you 
PNG or JPEG. Now, keep in mind, JPEGs are not, there's no transparency in JPEGs, so you're plopping something on top of another thing versus a PNG. Um, in the case of me, I've just put it in the corner. There's some shadow and that kind of detail that it allows me so I can get it kind of looking the way I want it to. How big is it? Where do you want to put it? How What's the opacity of it? Mine's slightly see-through. Um, and then where do you want to put it? Uh, so there are different, there's different uses for um, an identity plate versus a watermark. This is something that you've really got to play with and it's on a case by case situation. The one thing that you cannot do in either an identity plate or a watermark is put photographic information. And what photographic, by what photographic information I mean is there is a photo info button right here. See when I click that, right at the bottom of the image, it popped up this little white line. This is the one feature that I have been asking for since January 2007, sorry, since January 2006, when Adobe Lightroom was beta, I have been asking for them to put this photo info on the image itself. Uh, because what I can do with that, if you see, I have this set up for a template and I'm gonna just increase this size right here so you can see it a little better. This right here is the photo number. If you if I hover down here, you can see ID sorry 1D4 underscore 2299. Well, that is the photo number. So right there, that grabs it straight out of the metadata. This is the date that the photo was taken, and this is something that I put in myself. Custom settings. So I can go in here and edit. All of these things are possible for me to pull from the EXIF data, and in this case, I put IP, IPTC data into the file as well. So there's a lot of different things that you can add to this. The only problem is it has to bump this up. Now I can change the color of this, I can do anything like that, but it keeps it down there in that bottom little gutter. Now the problem is here, in order to get that to print, because I just mentioned to you that the photo printers all auto expand when they print to make sure that you get a full bleed, you have to come in here and set your margins and then test the print. So I bumped it up a little bit because if this information is critical, where I used this information before and why you see it says Carson Valley Little League is because I used it for when we used to print four by sixes on location. We printed a book of four by sixes for every league that we shot and we displayed them in four by six print form. Those days are gone obviously because everybody has a cell phone and we can look at them digitally. We happen to use iPads on site. People can look at them there. I don't have the print cost. But once upon a time, we printed them and I did exactly this. I bumped up that little the margin there and bumped up that thing because when that print came out that little white line right there was perfectly across the bottom of the image and the and we could see what the photo number was obviously a lot of things have changed since then so something to keep in mind that photo info I wish they would do something about it but they don't there's no interest in doing something about it um, so that's kinda where we are um, down here Print sharpening, I leave low. This is personal preferences. What type of media you're printing on, matte or glossy. I'm actually printing on luster, which is technically neither, but I choose matte. Now here's where it gets into being really important. Color management. <coughs> we have spent a lot of money on cameras. We have spent a lot of money on computers. We've manage this image we've got it looking exactly how we want it and then we go and jack it up and ruin it with how we print it give the printer the opportunity to make the best print it can tell it how to color manage your photo now in this case I have the Epson XP 960 series premium luster I am printing on Epson premium luster paper so if you have or are you, or you are printing on a specific paper 
ask that company if it did not come with the printer and the regular drivers. So maybe you're using Canon paper on an Epson printer. I would still kind of stick with the Epson drivers, but maybe you're using Hannah Mule or another type of off um, company. There's some beautiful papers that are available out there. Um, different, all kinds of different types. Ask them for their printer profiles. It will make your prints look like they should. Um, in this case, since we set this up on the 960, um, the premium luster is what I'm going to choose. Relative percept perceptual, these are, um, if it, if the color is out of gamut. Now, let's talk about in and out of gamut a little bit. I'm printing on inkjet printers. The gamut for an inkjet printer is much broader than it is for some other types of printers. So in this case, um, relative will move the, the uh, says preserves color accuracy, but clips out of gamut detail. Proof copies matching this color profile will use their own intent. Um, versus perceptual is preserves out of gamut detail, but may change in gamut colors. That to me sounds scarier. So I choose relative. Um, I don't do any print adjustments, um, brightening or contrasting when it prints just because I want the printer. I don't want the printer making those decisions. So that's kind of a rundown of the right hand side. Um, we've set this whole thing up. We've got it printing on the paper that we want. We don't want any uh, info or watermarks or anything like that on there. We want a five by seven. Um, it's all obviously zoom to fill, rotate to fit. Um, now, in the case of this, it's a vertical template. So if I click or unclick this, it doesn't matter. Repeat one photo per page. Again, there's only one photo on the page. Um, stroke border is an interesting one. Again, I had mentioned that you could put a border around things. A stroke border. Sorry, you can't see this because I'm using black. Let's go to white. There's a stroke border that I could easily just put a quick border of a certain amount around each image. Um, something to consider uh, if you want to put a, some kind of a border uh, around them. Uh, so now we're kind of ready to print. We've told it all the things on the right hand side that we want and for, make for sure. Over here, back on the left hand side, and I could have done this in the, in the previous, you know, done it at the beginning, as long as you make sure that you do it. The page setup, we want this on the 960 other. We want a five by seven borderless, then hit print settings. You have to make sure that this is all filled out correctly, or you will get garbage out of your printer. I can't tell you how many places there are to click because I've never counted it, but I am in this print dialog box all the time. Default settings. That's fine. Go into layout, go down to print settings. Okay. This printer, as I told you guys has two uh, trays for paper. Tell it as much information as you can give it. Make every attempt to make sure you're getting the best possible print you can from your printer. Cassette one is the five by seven cassette. I want to print on premium photo paper luster. Now look at that right there. That's the paper that I'm printing on. I'm going to back out of here real quick. Remember I told you I want to print on the Epson XP 960 and I want premium luster. Make these match. It really does affect your print. So we're going to go back into print setting, back down to print settings. Print quality, every printer is going to be different. You might have draft quality, best quality. You got to decide here. If best quality is more important to you, which means slower coming out of your printer, use quality or best quality or whatever you do. I tend to use minimum on expansion. I told you guys that it auto expands. If you're having a little bit of troubles with stuff, um, you can try a larger one, but I want as much of the image and by as much of the image, I'm going to cancel back out of here. I want as much of this as I can get. I don't want to, I don't want to cut and stuff off. I've already cut off the a in Armstrong. This is our, you know, Armstrong with arm, uh, RM strong. So 
uh, I want to give it as much as possible. Again, clicking back into print settings. Back down to print settings. All right, so quality, I set this to minimum. Color matching. Well, this is all grayed out. It's all grayed out because I told it over here on the right hand side, this is how I want you managing the color. So the drivers automatically know to shut this off. Paper handling, also important. This could possibly say any one of these things. Now it gives me a suggestion, which I happen to like its suggestion, but sometimes this can be off. This can be wrong. And if this is wrong, you could have a you could print out a garbage print. By garbage print, I mean it could be a 4x6 on a 5x7 sheet of paper. It could be a 5x7 on a f an 8x10 paper. Make sure you have all these things set up. I don't want a cover page. Print settings, we've been in here already. Color options. This is the other place. Again, it's somewhat, I'm going to call this grayed out, even though you can read the text. There's no options here because you told it here what you wanted it to do. Two-sided printing, obviously we do not want that. And layout is just, um, well, it is important. Um, I don't want to downplay this. The reason it's important, and one of the things that I do at my studio, is we print on matte paper at the studio. So when the printer is finished with the, the print, it's actually curled. Um, the front of the paper has moisture on it, so it has caused the paper to curl. As it dries, the, pa the print will flatten right out, right in, front, right in front of your eyes. If you set it on the counter, it's all curled up. It will flatten right out in just a matter of, uh, you know, depending on how much ink is on that page, in, in a matter of minutes. So the reason I bring this to your attention is because the floor in our studio is dark, so that's where the most saturation of ink is. So I actually reverse the page orientation of the studio so that dark section of the floor comes out first. And once it comes out first, then it has the opportunity to dry the, you know, it'll be the first thing to dry. So this is something you might want to consider and take a look at just in case. Um, that's where this reverse page orientation can be helpful. Uh, so we're going to save out of there. Okay, now if I print from right here, I'll get a great print. I've set the page up. I've got the right printer. I've got the right size. I've done all my print settings. I've hit the, the important marks. The right printer is up here. I've got the print settings here. It's coming out of the right cassette. It's coming the right paper type. It's good quality. Minimum expansion. I'm going to save out of here. Now, I want to save this. To save this, all you have to do is click this plus sign, tell it which folder you want to put it in, and give it a name. And remember, I'm just going to show you, 5 by 7 verts. Okay, let's just pick that. Ah, I haven't used 5 by 7 vert for anything, so right there, it gave me that template as we set it up all the way down the right hand side now you can print in fury with that now you guys anybody who has tried to production print before knows that a customer orders a special number one which in my world the special number one is an eight by ten two five by sevens and eight wallets you guys saw here that i am printing four wallets at a time so in order to print what a, a package number one for somebody um, all I have to do is choose this hit printer brings up a familiar dialog box we've seen this before I change this to two and hit print my printer is on so I'm not going to print it because you guys can't see that it's going to print I'm going to hit cancel um, then I go to the next item. I need two 5x7s of this printer. Change this to two. Print. Go to my five. Go to my 8x10. I readjust it just a little bit so it prints well. Hit printer and print. Done. Now, all those prints, in the case of how I am printing and doing production, all those prints are going to come out from the same printer. 
Now, it's it's a pretty well-known fact that not all printers print exactly the same. They're just a little bit different in color and maybe tone, but it's very, very slight. The beauty of why I like these printers is because both the 5x7s and the 8x10s come out of the same printer, so they look exactly the same. That's a huge benefit to me um, because I can't stand that a 5x7 and an 8x10 can't look the same. And that is the case of a lot of printers. Um, in the case of how I'm doing it, it's not. So just another benefit, in, in my opinion, to, to, these, to these printers. <coughs> One last thing I want to touch on. There's a print and a printer button. The printer button brings up this dialog box and says all the things that we agreed to over here in print settings. This is the same dialog box. All these things that we agreed to over here, go ahead and print if you want to change the number, all those types of things. If I hit this print button right here, it assumes that what you had in that printer, it makes all these assumptions and just goes forward with the print. So if I hit this, I'm going to get one print of this type. If I changed this to two here, the next time I hit this print, it's going to give me two of these 5x7s. So I'm a little, I don't know if it's OCD or anal or whatever you want to call it. I tend to want to hit this printer button so I have some control over seeing what's going to come out of the printer. So I know there's a lot of information there, guys. It's a long video. Hopefully you made it through it. If you haven't, scrub back and see some of the things. If you've got questions, let me know. Um, I will, uh, again, this is Jeff at Insta Image. I hope this was very helpful. Uh, happy printing out there, and I will see you in the next video.